Hi guys, in this video we are going to start red black trees. So what all we are going to cover in this video? First of all, we will see that what are red black trees. Then we will actually compare uh, AVL trees and red black trees, how, where red black tree can be used and where AVL tree can be used, right? What are the advantages and disadvantages of both of them? Uh, then actually we will uh, see the properties of red black trees. So there are many properties that a red black tree should satisfy in order to be called as a red black tree, right? Then I'll prove that why red black trees are actually balanced binary search tree. Uh, many people say that red black trees are balanced binary search tree. They just give this statement. They, they are not able to prove it. So I'll prove it for you that why red black trees should be balanced binary search trees. Okay. And then finally, we will end our video by talking about some real life applications of red black trees because it is really important for you to know that where this data structure or this advanced data structure red black tree is used in real life before moving on to the operations like insertion and deletion in red black trees in the upcoming videos. So what are red black trees? So basically red black trees are uh, binary search trees which are balanced or balanced binary search trees. So I assume that you already know what are binary search trees. Okay. So if you know binary search trees, you can understand each and everything very well. I'll not be explaining binary search tree over here. Just I'll say that binary search trees are those trees in which for each and every node uh, in the right subtree, all the nodes are actually greater than that node. And in the left subtree, all the nodes are actually smaller than that node and this value holds or this property holds for all the nodes not just the root node but all the nodes including the root node right so now uh, so basically red black trees are balanced binary search trees so basically in red black trees every node apart from following the binary search property uh, it also has a color assigned to it and this color can either be black or red. So for an example, uh, this is a red black tree, right? Uh, as you can see, each and every node over here follows the binary search property like the root is 25 and uh, all the nodes over here are actually greater than 25 and on the left subtree, all the nodes are lesser than 25, right? Same for 36 all the nodes on the right of 36 are greater and same in case of 12. So this is basically a binary search tree and every node also has a color assigned to it. Like these nodes are red and the rest of the nodes are black, right? So this is basically an example of a red black tree, right? So now, as you can see, this tree is also balanced. So in a balanced binary search tree, so first of all, we need to understand that why do we need balanced binary search tree? Or uh, this explanation, we uh, you will also hear in case of AVL trees that why do we need AVL trees? Because they uh, actually have a height of log n, where n is equal to the number of nodes in the binary search tree. So if, uh, and every operation uh, is actually giving the time complexity of the order of height of the BST. So if your height of the binary search tree is of the order of log n, so every operation like the search, insert and delete will take order of log n time, right? So that is why we actually need balanced binary search tree. But we already had AVL tree, right? So what is so special about red black trees? So for that, we need to do a comparison between AVL trees and red black trees. So uh, AVL trees are actually strictly balanced. When I say strictly balanced, they are also binary search tree, right? Whereas the red black trees are roughly balanced. So you have, when you, you learnt AVL trees, you must have learnt about uh, this property of AVL trees that the uh, difference between the height of the left subtree and the right subtree cannot exceed one. So they are basically strictly balanced, right? Whereas that's not the case with the red black trees. Okay. So from this first difference or the first comparison between these two binary search trees, 
वन मोर थिंग दैट वी कैन अंडरस्टैंड इज दैट टू मेक इट स्ट्रिक्टली बैलेंस्ड द इंसर्ट एंड द डिलीट ऑपरेशन विल टेक अ लॉन्गर टाइम ड्यूरेशन राइट बिकॉज एज यू नो in avial trees when we do uh, rotations when there is an imbalance and we do rotations in case of insert and delete at that time the uh, imbalance is actually transferred to higher levels so basically if this is your avial tree so if this is your avial tree when you did a rotation over here there is a pro, uh, probability that your imbalance will actually be transferred and again you need to do a rotation over here so basically in order to maintain this property of a strictly balanced binary search tree insertion and deletion or uh, insert operations insertion and deletion operations take a longer time duration right so that is what we understand from uh, this property of strictly balanced tree so we can say that insert delete take longer time but obviously if it is uh, roughly balanced or lesser balanced as compared to avial trees the red black trees so they will take lesser time to maintain that property of bal uh, balancing the red black trees so according to you Uh, as we know avial is a strictly balanced and red black tree is roughly balanced or not as balanced as avial tree so according to you in the in the in case of search operation where the time complexity will be more in case of avial tree or red black tree if you are telling me that the time complexity of search will be greater in case of avial tree you are wrong because here for a tree that is strictly balanced and that is having an height of order of log n very strictly so obviously the time complexity will be less so uh, by looking at this comparison you can understand that in this case this is basically a property of both these trees that are, have to be satisfied when we are inserting and deleting elements in both both of these trees but in this case uh, when we look at the, when we look at the insert and delete operation we find that it is better in case of red black tree so here red black tree is actually a better option for insert and delete operation whereas for search operation the avial tree is a better option right what should we do should we choose avial trees when we are choosing an advanced data structure for our algorithm or should we choose red black trees that actually depends uh, so if the insert and delete operations are actually performed more frequently when you are performing a task in that case red black tree is a better option but if the search frequency or the frequency of the search operation is greater than the insert and delete operation in the task that you are performing then you should go for avial trees so this was actually a brief comparison between avial trees and red black trees so now let us look at some properties of red black trees so we will learn these properties because this will be helpful when we will be do performing the insert and delete operation in red black trees because those operations will actually take these properties into consideration so that is why learning these properties is really important so first of all the first property that the red black tree is actually a balanced binary search tree we already know that the red black tree is a balanced binary search tree later on i am also going to prove it why red black tree is a balanced binary search tree when it is following the rest of the four properties automatically we will uh, understand that why red black tree should be a balanced binary search tree right it cannot be unbalanced okay and it says that with each node either red or black so uh, basically in what is the structure of a binary search tree it has a data that stores this value like 40 10 65 then it has a left pointer for for the left child and a right pointer for the right child right apart from that in case of red black tree it has also has to store the color of the node like for in case of 65 uh, the color red should be stored in the structure of the node so for that it will have another bit where it with which it can store the color of the node where one can represent black and zero can represent red or vice versa right so there is only one difference in the uh, in the structure of red black tree as compared to the normal binary search trees this bit that stores the color of the node right okay so now what about the second property 
the second property says that the root is always black. So if you just look at uh, this tree, do you think just looking at the two properties, the first two properties, is this a red black tree? Okay, this is a balanced binary search tree. It is following the uh, property of a binary search tree. If you just pause the video and look at it, it is a binary search tree. And each node is actually red or black. Okay, each node is red or black. And is the root black? Yes, the root is black. So if we just look at the first two properties, the first and the second property, we can say that this is a red black tree right okay now what if i change this 100 over here to 84 is this a red black tree no it is not a red black tree because now it has stopped following the property of a binary search tree as you can see over here uh, 90 is actually greater than 84 but on the right side of 90, there should be all the uh, value of all the nodes should be greater than 90. But here we have got this thing violating the property of red black tree. So this is not a red black tree, right? Because it is uh, violating which property? The first property which says that the red black tree is also a binary search tree. Okay, so now I can change it again to 100. So now again it is a red black tree. Now let us look at the third property. The third property says that each leaf nil node is always black. Now what is leaf nil node? So here it is written external node. In the optimal binary search tree we have learned external nodes, right? So now we will look at what are external nodes. Just to remind you, all these square nodes which I am drawing, these are my external nodes. Each leaf node should all, each leaf nil node is always black. Okay, so now if I just change this node as red, will this remain a red black tree? No, because it is violating the third property, right? So that is why I'll change it back to black. And now this is a red black tree. Okay, if we just look at the first three properties, I'm not looking at the properties that I have not explained until now. We have looked at the first three properties. So this tree is actually following the first three properties. That is why we can call this a red black tree for the time being. So now what is the fourth property? If a node is red, both its children should be black. So for example, uh, if we find any node over here that is red, both its children should be black. So let us look at all the red nodes, uh, 65 is a red node, are both its children black? Yes, the external node is one of its children and 90, both are black. What about this one, 15? Yes, both are black. 2? Yes, both are external nodes, so they are obviously black. 85, both are black, external nodes, okay. So this property is holding now, is this a red black tree? No, this is not a red black tree, why? Because as you can see over here, 10 is a red node and both its children should be black but it has one child that is red. So this is not a red black tree. So that is why if we make 10 as black now again this is a red black tree because we have made 10 as black right fine. So now is this tree following all the four properties? Yes, it is following all the pro four properties. So we can say that it is a red black tree. We, ha we haven't seen the fifth property until now. So now let's see the last property. For each node, for each and every node, every path from that node to the leaf nil node should contain same number of black nodes. What does this mean? For each and every node, let us take a node. For example, we'll take 10 as our uh, reference node. So from this node to each and every no leaf node, the, the path that we actually travel should contain the same number of black nodes, right? And when we count the number of black nodes in a particular path, we don't include our reference node. 
right? So, for example, uh, if I look at this path, 10, 5, and this leaf node over here. So, in this case, how many uh, black nodes are there? Not 3, 2. One, this 5, that is a black node, and this external node. So, we have got 2, right? In this path, we followed this path. So, what about uh, over here? Here, we have got only from 10, 15, and this external node over here. So, here we have got not two, one uh, black node because we don't count the node itself which we are taking as reference node. So, we have got only one black node over here. So, this tree is actually violating the fifth property because for each and every node, the path to leaf node, all the path to leaf node are, not actu are actually not containing the equal number of black nodes, right? As we saw in the example of 10. So this is not a red black tree. Uh, even if we look at some other examples, so for example, we take reference node as 65. It is not necessary that we take reference node as a as a black node itself. So if we look, uh, take reference node at 65, we will see that uh, it has actually contains uh, one black node uh, over here in this path. And in this path, if we look at this path, there are two black nodes, one, two, right? Okay. Now, uh, another definition that I want you to learn over here is that of black height, right? So, we will use this when we will prove that the red black tree should is actually a balanced binary search tree. So, what is black height? So, black height is basically equal to the number of black nodes from a particular node to the leaf node, to the leaf nil node, right? So, for example, if we try to find out uh, the black height for 10, right? So, if we try to find out the black height of this path, uh, this from 10, 5, 2 till the nil node, how many black nodes are there in this path? Uh, 5 and this uh, nil node. Again, we don't count the reference node, which we have taken right now as 10. So, th the black height of 10 is actually equal to 2 for this path, right? And for this path, what is the black height of uh, 10? For uh, this path, it is actually equal to 1 from 10, 15 to the external node because only one black node is present in this path from, right? Only one black node, that is this one. So, the black height of 10 for this path is actually equal to 1, right? So, now the black height of a particular node should always be equal. So, we can actually transform this fifth property. We can write it equivalently as black height of any node should be same or equal for all paths till leaf nodes leaf nil nodes, right? Not leaf nodes, but we are talking about the external nodes, the leaf nil nodes. Okay, so this property can be also written in this way, right? So now, these were the five properties of uh, red black trees. So here we take two examples of uh, two binary search trees and we try to find out that are these binary search trees red black trees or not? And do they follow those properties or not? Or which properties are violated if they are not red black tree? So, the first example. So, here, uh, is it following the first property that each node is either re red or black and this should be a balanced binary search tree? Okay, uh, 20, 30 is greater than 20, fine. 15 is less than 20 and 18 is greater than, uh, fine. So, it is a binary search tree. So, first property it follows, right? So, it follows the first property. Root is always black. Okay, it violates the second property itself. So, in this case, uh, it violates the second property, right? Second property, it doesn't follow. So, let's move to the second example. So, is this a balanced binary search tree with each node red or black? Yes, it is. Root is always black. Does it follow the second property? Yes, the root is black. Uh, the third property, each leaf nil node should always be black. Yes, all external nodes are black. What about the fourth property? If a node is red, both its children should be black. 
ओके रेड नोट बोथ चिल्ड्रन ब्लैक रेड नोट ओके वन चाइल्ड वन चाइल्ड ऑफ दिस रेड नोट सो वन चाइल्ड ऑफ दिस रेड नोट इज एक्चुअली रेड सो इट वायलेट्स द फोर्थ प्रॉपर्टी राइट ओवर हियर इट वायलेट्स द फोर्थ प्रॉपर्टी but we have actually found out that both of these trees are not red black trees because they violate some or the other property right so now we have learned the properties of red black trees with the using those properties we will prove that the red black tree should be a balanced binary search tree right so in order to prove this we should actually prove that the subtree rooted at any node x should at least contain 2 raised to bh x bh of x minus 1 internal nodes what is bh of x bh of x is actually black height of node x right so this is just the terminology so suppose if this is my node x so the black height of node x is actually uh, in this case the black in this part the black height of node x is 2 here also it is 2 right so this is a red black tree for example and this is what we need to prove right so now we will prove this using mathematical induction so first of all we will look at the base case so for base case we will consider our node x in a uh, node x can be any node right so a node x we will consider as our leaf nil node suppose this node right this node we will consider as our node x so in this case what is actually the number of internal nodes that are present in the subtree whose row whose root is actually this node x so is is there a subtree whose no root is node x yes there is a subtree but there are no nodes except uh, this node itself so uh, what are the number of internal nodes in this subtree whose root is node x there is zero internal nodes there is only one node but that is also an external node so we know that there are actually zero uh, internal nodes in case of a node that is uh, in case of a subtree that is rooted at node x and here node x is actually a leaf nil node or the or an external node so if we uh, use in the base case if we try to find out the number of internal nodes uh, and check with the base case so we will see that 2 raised to bh of x minus 1 in this case is actually equal to uh, b what is uh, black height of x the black height of x or the or this leaf no nil node is actually zero because we don't count the reference node in this case the reference node is x that that uh, uh, that node will not be counted in the black height so there is no further node so the black height is zero so 2 raised to 0 minus 1 is equal to 1 minus 1 so that is equal to 0 so yes so uh, the base case is true so, right so the base case is true so now let us look at the inductive step so for inductive step let us consider any uh, internal node as x okay let us consider any internal node as x which has a positive height and it has two children so is there any such node over here yeah we can consider this node as x okay so now uh, this node uh, so this node's black height will be equal to black height of x right so then uh, black height of the parent will be equal to black height of x so let us consider this as parent and it has two children right so now what will be the black height of any internal node that we are considering at as x so the black height of that node will be equal to bh of x but what about its children what will be the black height of its uh, both its children so that depends if the ch child is actually a black node like in this case so the black height of the children will be equal to black height of x minus 1 whatever the uh, was the black height of the parent it will be minus 1 because the black height of the parent was actually even considering the children but when we are calculating the black height of the children they will not consider themselves into the black height so that is why that will be black height of x minus 1 for children in case of black children right or black child for black child but if this is a red child 
if suppose this is a red child okay so now just tell just think and tell me what will be the black height of this child when the black height of its parent is actually bh of x it will remain bh of x why the reason is because the uh, black height will not change when we traverse in this path because there is no black node that is encountered be between the parent and the child right so that is why it will be remain as bh of x for red child right so the black height of the children can either be bh of x minus 1 or bh of x it depends whether the child is the black child or a, or a red child okay so now let us look at one more thing so what will be the number of internal nodes uh, for the subtree that is rooted at x so what will be the number of internal nodes in this subtree that is starting from x it can contain many nodes apart from its children its grandchildren and uh, further right so uh, let us calculate the number of internal nodes and we are doing this for the subtree that is rooted at x so first of all it will contain it, itself so because it we have considered it uh, we have considered x as an internal node so obviously it will con uh, contain itself in that subtree so 1 plus plus it will contain the number of internal nodes that are in its left child in left child plus it will contain the number of internal nodes in the right child right that will be equal to the number of internal nodes for x or the subtree that is rooted at x right number of internal nodes so this is for right child so let us assume that this is actually true like that the subtree rooted at x contains 2 raised to bh of x minus 1 at least it contains these many nodes it is true for both the children right let us assume that so for that we need to find out what is the black height of both the children for time being let us assume that the uh, black both the nodes are actually black nodes because we are considering the worst case over here the minimum number of nodes we are considering so for minimum number of nodes we should consider that, that both the children are actually black children so that is why we will do in, if uh, the left child is a black child so the number of internal nodes that are uh, there for the subtree that is rooted at the left child will be equal to 2 raised to bh of x minus 1 minus 1 right according to this formula instead of bh of x i have substituted bh of x minus 1 because we are considering black children plus again same thing for the right child okay fine so we are calculating actually the number of internal nodes for the subtree that is rooted at x right right so we actually have proved this thing that the number of internal nodes for any subtree that is rooted at x will at least contain 2 raised to bh of x minus 1 internal nodes why we are saying at least because we have considered the worst case over here that both the children are actually black children otherwise if we would have taken the case of red child the value would have been greater but we are saying it will be at least this much right so this is actually proved so now we will use this proof to say that n or the number of internal nodes is actually greater than or equal to 2 raised to bh of x minus 1. Can you write black height of uh, x or the black height of uh, a node in terms of the height of that node? So if we try to do that, if suppose uh, the black height, if suppose this is our x, 
and uh, it will have a black height of x, right? Now, what will be the height of x? What will be the height of this node, right? So, for finding out the height, how many uh, levels are below that? The property of red black tree says that there cannot be two consecutive red nodes. That means if we have a red node, the next node should be black. Both the children of a red node are black, right? So every time a black node will actually find a place after a red node if we look at a path. But can the next node be black? If we also make the next node black in a particular path in a red black tree, in that case the property which says that the black height of x should al always be equal for all the paths that will get violated. So that is why the black uh, that so that is why the red black tree actually has this property which says that the black height of x or the black height of any node in the tree is actually equal to the height of that node in the tree divided by 2. Okay. So this is actually the thing. So in this case, we can write black height of x. So number of internal nodes is actually greater than or equal to black height of x can be written as h by 2 minus 1, right? So this is n plus 1 is greater than or equal to 2 raised to h by 2 or you can write it as 2 raised to h by 2 is less than or equal to n plus 1. So this is basically h by 2 less than or equal to log of n plus 1 base 2. So h is equal, h is less than or equal to 2 log of n plus 1, right? So this tells us that the height of any node in the tree is actually less than or equal to 2 into log of log to the base 2 n plus 1. And what is n over here? n is the number of internal nodes, right? So that means this value is actually also true for the uh, root node because root node is also an internal node. So we can conclude that the height of the tree because here we will not say subtree when we are considering the root as x. So the height of the tree is less than or equal to uh, 2 into log to the base 2 n plus 1 or we can say that the height of a red black tree is actually equal to the order of log n, right? So that is why we say that a red black tree is actually a balanced binary search tree, thus proved. Right? So we have understood now that why a red black tree is actually a balanced binary search tree. So uh, we actually saw what is a red black tree. We compared red black tree with AVL trees. We saw the properties of red black trees and then we finally proved that the red black tree is actually a balanced binary search tree when it considers all its properties, right? So let us talk about some applications of red black trees. So if you have used STL in C++, in that case, you would have, you, you might know that uh, there is map, multi-map and multi-set. So all these containers are actually implemented using red black trees. And apart from that, if you have uh, in data science heard about k-means clustering, so k-means clustering in order to improve its time efficiency, red black trees are used over there as well. So that's all from this video. In the next video, we will learn the type of rotations and imbalances in red black trees and th they will eventually help us to perform different operations on red black trees like insertion and deletion. So see you in the next video. Till then, goodbye.